Okay, so are you ready to dive into this emotional intelligence thing? It's like we've got this workbook, the Emotional Intelligence Skills Workbook, and it's like a backstage pass to like our own emotions. Yeah, absolutely. And this is not just like some fluffy self-help book. This gets into like the nitty gritty of emotions, all those like messy, complicated feelings we all have. Right. Like remember that time you spilled coffee on yourself right before that big meeting? Yeah. Talk about an emotional hijacking. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what it is. That feeling of just being totally overwhelmed by an emotion. You know, in your case, probably panic. <laughs> and you just react without thinking. We've all been there. Oh, totally. And that's what I like about this workbook. It's all about building those skills to navigate those moments so we can like respond in a way that it's actually, you know, true to ourselves, mm. even when things get kind of crazy. Exactly. It's like having tools for your emotions. Yeah. Right. You learn to recognize those warning signs. You figure out what your triggers are. And most importantly, you develop some strategies to manage all those big feelings in a healthy way. So it's less about like being happy all the time and more about being resilient. All right. Right. I can get behind that. Exactly. It's like life is going to throw emotional curveballs at you, right? This workbook is giving you the skills to ride those waves instead of getting totally wiped out. Okay. I'm intrigued. Yeah. But like before we get too far, let's define this whole emotional intelligence thing. Okay. So emotional intelligence, it's basically being able to understand and manage your own emotions, but it's also about being able to see and influence the emotions in other people. And the cool thing is it's like any skill you, you can totally learn it and get better at it over time. Okay, got it. Hmm. So it's more than just being aware of your feelings. It's about knowing what to do with those feelings. And, you know, look at that interesting point about how we're practically wired for this from childhood. Yeah, it's true. Think about how kids just express their emotions so freely. But somewhere along the line, a lot of us, we learn to just stuff those feelings down. Maybe because that's what we saw growing up or because, you know, we were rewarded for being quiet. And then we end up as adults who just bottle everything up until we, like, explode. Hmm. It's not a cute look. Not at all. And the thing is, those emotions, they don't just disappear. They end up driving our behavior in ways we don't even realize. So yeah. like step one on this emotional intelligence journey, it's all about building self-awareness. You got to get to know your own emotional landscape, the good, the bad, and the ugly. That makes sense. Yeah. And they had all those exercises in the workbook to help with this. You know, that one with the music really stood out to me. Oh, yeah, that's a great one. Okay. So imagine this. You put on your favorite song. Like yeah. the one that just instantly puts you in a certain mood and you just pay attention to what's happening in your body. Exactly. Like, are you feeling a tightness in your chest? Are your palms getting a little sweaty? Are you clenching your jaw? It's about noticing those little physical clues. Because those physical sensations, they're like little hints that can help you figure out what you're feeling before you get totally swept away by the emotion itself. Exactly. It's like they say, name it to tame it. When you can actually put a word to the emotion you're feeling, you're in a much better place to manage it. The workbook also talks about paying attention to your thoughts when you feel a strong emotion. Which, let's be real, could be a pretty wild ride. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, are you stuck in that spiral of worst case scenarios? Are you blaming yourself or other people? Bringing awareness to those thoughts helps you separate the emotion from the story you're telling yourself about it. It's like you can finally press pause on that, like, runaway train of thoughts. Yeah. You can say, wait a minute, is this even real? Exactly. That pause, that moment of awareness, that's where you have the power. You can mm -hmm. actually choose a different response, one that's more, you know, in line with who you want to be. Which brings us to one of my favorite parts. It's like surfing the emotion. Instead of getting totally knocked over by the wave, you learn how to ride it out. I love that metaphor. And the workbook gives you those actual steps to do it. You start by noticing those physical sensations we were just talking about, right? Then you bring in the awareness of the thoughts that are like swirling around in your head. And here's the important part. You don't judge those thoughts. You just notice them. Like you're suddenly this curious observer of your own thoughts and feelings. And I love that the book says that emotion, they're like waves. They eventually just calm down. They don't last forever, even though it can feel like that in the moment. And sometimes just knowing that can be enough to help you ride it out without you know, making things worse. We're sure. Hmm. So we've been talking about understanding and managing our own emotions, but there's another big piece to this whole emotional intelligence thing, isn't there? Absolutely. It's not just about how do you feel. It's about how we understand and respond to the emotions of other people. So let's talk about that. The book really dives into all the communication styles. Yeah. Passive aggressive, passive aggressive. And then there's assertive communication. They call it like the holy grail of communication. It's true. Assertive communication is all about expressing your needs and your opinions clearly and respectfully. 
you're not putting yourself down and you're not putting other people down either. So it's that sweet spot between being a pushover and a jerk. Exactly. One of the best tools for assertive communication is using I statements. So instead of saying, you always interrupt me, you'd say something like, I feel frustrated when I'm interrupted before I can finish my thought. You're taking the blame out of it and just focusing on how you feel and what you need. Exactly. Because when you start a conversation by blaming the other person, it just puts them on the defensive. But when you focus on your own experience, it opens the door for conversation that's actually productive. That makes a lot of sense. And the book also talks about nonverbal communication, like huh. your body language, how you're speaking, even eye contact. Oh, it's huge. Nonverbal cues can actually say way more than your words. Think about it. You can tell someone, I'm fine, but if you're saying it with an attitude and not making eye contact, they're going to see right through that. Oh, we've all been on the receiving end of that fine. That's definitely not fine. Exactly. So it's not just about what you say, it's how you say it. And the workbook gives you some great tips for reading other people's nonverbal cues and being aware of your own. You know, I realize that when I'm feeling defensive, I cross my arms, mm -hmm. which is probably not the most welcoming gesture. It's all about noticing those little habits and then making a conscious effort to change them. It might feel weird at first, but like anything else, the more you do it, the more natural it becomes. Okay, so we've covered understanding our own emotions, communicating assertively, watching our nonverbal cues. Now let's talk about how we connect with other people on an emotional level. The book talks about attunement and empathy. Those words are used interchangeably so often, but they're actually pretty different. Okay, so break it down for us. What's the difference? Okay, so attunement. It's about being present with someone and really paying attention to what they're saying and how they're saying it. You're creating a space where they feel seen, heard, and understood. It's like you're reflecting their emotions back to them, showing them that you get it, even yeah. if you don't necessarily agree with them. Exactly. And that feeling of being understood is so powerful. It creates this feeling of safety and connection. And that makes it easier to communicate openly and honestly. Empathy takes it a step further. It's not just about understanding how someone's feeling. It's about actually feeling it with them. Yes, exactly. It's that connection with the shared human experience, even if you haven't personally been in their shoes. The book had this example about a parent whose kid did something that really hurt them. You might be angry with your kid, mm -hmm. but you can also empathize with whatever fear or insecurity might be driving their behavior. And that's the thing. Being able to hold your own emotions and someone else's emotions at the same time, that's where you find that true connection. It's like that saying, right? Be kind. Everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. You might not even know what it is, but just that little bit of empathy can make a world of difference. Absolutely. And the best part is that both attunement and empathy, they're like muscles. You can totally strengthen them with practice. In fact, the workbook even suggests things like practicing reflective listening, you know, really asking questions to understand where someone's coming from, even simple things like eye contact and just being aware of your body language. Yeah, it's like you're building this bridge of understanding one piece at a time. Yeah. And, and speaking of building the book doesn't just like throw all these concepts at you and then peace out. Mm -hmm. It gives you this really practical plan to actually use this stuff, right? You're talking about the emotional intelligence action plan? Yeah. And yeah, it's like a roadmap for navigating those tough conversations that we all have to deal with sometimes. Okay, so walk me through it. How do we actually use this action plan? So first things first, you got to figure out what conversation you want to have. You know that one that keeps popping into your head. Okay, got it. Then what? Now it's time for some emotional inventory. The book says you got to get real with yourself about the emotions that might come up during this conversation. Okay. Like, are you going to feel anxious, angry, sad? You name it, write it down. So it's like you're getting ready for those emotional landmines. You won't be so surprised when they blow up. Exactly. Forewarned is forearmed, right? But it's not just about bracing for impact. This is where those values we talked about come in. Remember, those are like your guiding principles. What's really important to you in this conversation? Honesty, respect, setting boundaries. Write those down, too. OK, so you're walking into this conversation with your eyes wide open, aware of your triggers and grounded in your values. I'm liking this. What's next? We finally get to talk. Almost. Now comes the fun part, scripting. The workbook says to actually, like, map out the conversation, what you want to say and how you want to say it, like your tone, your body language, the whole shebang. Wait a minute. Am I auditioning for a movie here? Think of it more like a dress rehearsal for a killer conversation. Yeah. It might feel a little weird at first, but trust me, having those key phrases and even just thinking about your body language, mm. it helps a ton, especially when those emotions start to bubble up. Okay. I'm convinced script is ready. What's next? This is where it gets good. 
You're going to switch gears and imagine the conversation from the other person's point of view. Oh, okay. Now I'm really interested. Tell me more. Basically, you got to step outside your own head for a minute and really try to see things through their eyes. How do you think they're feeling going into this conversation? What are their worries? What's their communication style like? It's like you're building empathy before you even start talking. Exactly. And honestly, this step is huge. Because when you actually try to understand where the other person is coming from, even if you don't agree with them, it helps you respond with more compassion and less like knee-jerk reaction. It's like you're diffusing the bomb before it can even go off. Okay. Okay. So I've got my script. I'm channeling my inner empath. Am I ready for the main event? Almost. The workbook has one last dress rehearsal for you. Let me guess. More scripting. Not this time. Now it's time to actually practice saying this stuff out loud. You can talk to the mirror, talk to your dog, call up a friend, whatever works. The important thing is to get comfortable actually saying those things that might feel a little awkward. So it's less about memorizing lines and more about finding my voice. Exactly. And here's a pro tip. If you're feeling brave, record yourself. Listening back can be seriously eye-opening. You'll notice things like your tone, any nervous habits you have, even if you talk too fast or too quiet. Okay, that's a great idea. It's like having a personal emotional intelligence coach in your pocket. Right. And then once you've practiced and fine-tuned everything, you're ready to go have that conversation in real life. It's showtime. Yeah. Before we wrap up, though, there's one more thing I wanted to touch on. The book mentions that even with all this preparation, these conversations are probably still going to feel a little uncomfortable. For sure. And that's totally normal. Actually, that discomfort, it's a good sign. It Fine. means you're growing and challenging yourself to show up in a way that's more authentic and more, you know, courageous. So basically, if it feels easy, you're probably doing it wrong. Exactly. Embrace yeah. the discomfort. It means you're on the right track. And there you have it. Mm. Our deep dive into the Emotional Intelligence Skills Workbook. We covered a lot today. From understanding those emotional hijacking moments to assertive communication, empathy, even how to script out those tough conversations. Who knew there was so much to learn about our own emotions? And remember, it's not about being perfect. It's about being present, aware, and willing to be yourself. Well, especially when it's hard. It's a lifelong journey, this whole emotional <laughs> intelligence thing. But like we talked about today, it's a journey worth taking. Absolutely. And hey, maybe the next time you spill your coffee all over yourself, you'll be able to laugh about it instead of freaking out. Oh, that's a goal worth shooting for. <laughs>